What's up guys, Rick Cordero, Run Playback. So today I'm gonna to talk about something not a lot of people know about me, and it's that I can't hear out of my left ear, otherwise known as SSD or single-sided deafness. So 91 decibels or greater is what's considered non-functioning. Uh, I was born with this. I never had any hearing in my left ear. So I'm gonna talk about some of the struggles I faced as well as some of the new technologies that I've been researching. Life with SSD is kind of a weird thing because it's somewhat of a hidden disability. Not a lot of people uh, know that you have it, but it definitely affects your quality of life in some small ways. So my earliest memory of this condition is I went to the audiologist when I was a kid. The audiologist was definitely concerned because I couldn't hear the tones. I was basically told, um, he has one functioning ear, he'll be fine. I guess it wasn't something that really hindered my communication, so my parents just kind of rolled with it. My teachers were notified about this, so they'd seat me in certain places, although they would quickly forget that um, I had a hearing issue. They would just assume that I was being distracted or I was just like not paying attention or I was not interested. I think it was caused by other things, which I'll, I'll get into later. So another memory that I have uh, was when I was in fourth or fifth grade and I was taking the bus. There were some kids on the bus and they had like this, I guess one of these like little mini Casio keyboard things, like really tiny uh, piano keyboards, but played really loud, um, you know, notes. Some genius on the bus thought it'd be funny to play this like little keyboard right on the side of, uh, you know, the students' heads, like right in front of their ears to just like shock them, I guess. It was the 80s, kids did stupid stuff like that. I remember they did it to me in my left ear and I didn't flinch. Although I could feel the tones, like I could, I could feel it, you know, it was definitely vibrating in my eardrum, but it wasn't, um, there were no nerves there to transmit that it was loud. So throughout high school and college, my friends sort of labeled me as the quiet one. I was introverted. I think that was just sort of part of my personality, my genetic makeup. But it was around this time that I also developed something called the head shadow effect, which is something involving sound localization. So when you have two good ears, you're able to pick out the sound like in a room. If you hear out of your left ear, you'd be able to kind of pinpoint who's talking, you know, your right ear and then your ears together would help you figure out who's behind you, whether they're on the left side or the right side. Because I can only hear in my right ear, I have something called the head shadow effect. So that means that sound passing, you know, from this way is being blocked by my head and becomes muffled when I hear it over here. So in like really crowded situations or in like crowded rooms, it becomes really overwhelming, you know, because you can't really place the sound. Everything just seems just jumbled and, and mixed together. Like almost like hearing a really bad mix of like a movie or something where just the sound effects and the dialogue and the music and it's all just like one volume level and just mixed all together. That's kind of what it's like um, for me when I'm in those situations. So another way to think about it is that when dogs smell, they can smell um, out of their left or right nostril. So when they, when they smell something, they can actually locate where it is without having to like look or turn their heads. The way we perceive smell, I believe is, is omnidirectional. I think that's the right word. Dog poo, for example, uh, when you smell that like in a room or like you're walking outside, you can't really pinpoint where it is. Uh, you just know it's there. The way I perceive um, sound is very similar to that. Like I know the sound is in the room. I just don't know exactly where it is. If there's like a certain a certain sound that I hear, like uh, the oven alarm or something like that. Like I know that's the oven upstairs. So there's like cues and different things that um, I'll be able to process. It's just when I'm in a new environment with like new people or someone I just met and a voice that I you know don't recognize, that's where it gets sort of overwhelming. So at restaurants, when I'm with like a large group of people, I usually try to be the first one to get in so I could seat myself in like the corner where my right ear is facing like uh, everyone that's at the table. So there's other situations where it's a really large group and then I have people sitting on my left side uh, and I'm sort of in the middle. I do my best to engage in conversation, but I think my brain kind of like shuts down a little bit. Like I'm not really gonna hear as much as I can on this side. So I'm gonna sort of like form this invisible wall. I'll know there's activity happening, but I'm not gonna be quick to engage 
because I think what happens is when I engage, it makes it a lot harder to like sustain a conversation. Whoever's sitting on my left side or talking on my left side, I know you're there, but I'm probably, you know, I'm probably like 60, percent listening to what you're saying, unfortunately. Now there's some times where the SSD actually works to my advantage, like when I'm sleeping and, you know, I want to sort of block out uh, noises. I just basically lay my head, my right ear on the pillow and I just muffle everything out. So without any extroverted tendencies or the need to like socialize a lot, um, I sort of retreated into the creative parts of my mind. The right brain uh, controls your creative thinking and then your left is controlling your analytical thinking. Because I hear out of my right ear, I believe that my right, the right side of my body is more dominant. I've also noticed that like my left side isn't always as responsive as my right side. I'll sometimes find my my right eye is, is more active than my left eye. I'll find myself talking out of the right side of my mouth. Also like tracking things with my eyes, I think I'll notice something with my right eye first and then my left sort of follows. So because I'm right-brained, I really think that's why, um, you know, creativity sort of dominates this part of my brain. So I think all these personality traits uh, led to me uh, pursuing filmmaking because it's really where I was able to empathize with an artist or an actor and understand their struggle. I find it to be actually a lot different than socializing at a bar or a restaurant or just hanging out with friends. It's sort of my way of communicating. I feel like it's I'm just a little less tense. I'm not as anxious. I think because, you know, we're just working towards a creative goal that my body and my, you know, everything just seems to be flowing a lot easier where I don't really notice my SSD as much. And then when I met my wife, Nancy, she was one of the first people I told about my SSD. She didn't think it was a problem or an issue. And she really helped me find inspiration and some of that courage to really achieve my goals and like be sort of fearless about it. And then when we had our daughter, I was always worried like, is this something that can actually be passed on? But when she was born, her hearing uh, was fine in both ears and she hears really great. She hears things that I can't even believe she can hear in like different parts of the house. So I decided to do my own research because I thought like after all these years, the technology should be better. There was one thing called the sound bite, which was a device that you put in your mouth that conducted sound, I think through your teeth and your bones that would send a signal to the part of your um, nerve that wasn't working. That seemed like it was really promising, but I think they went bankrupt the following year because I guess they didn't get approved by whatever you know government agency was in control of that. And there's also some stem cell research that's being done. Actually, I think they started last year, some clinical trials that are happening across the US for um, regrowing the hair cells in damaged uh, nerves and we have yet to see what the results will be. So the best like non-surgical option I believe that's available right now is the Phonak Cross BR which seems to get a lot of good reviews. I think Otacon I believe makes another Cross uh, device. So that's something I'm looking into. So I also did a search on personal amplifiers on Amazon and you sort of get all these cheap like I've seen on TV devices that are like uh, really promoted to the elderly. Those things just don't seem like they're right for me and my lifestyle, so I didn't even entertain that. But one interesting thing that I found that I've been using a lot recently is the Apple AirPods. Apple has a lot of accessibility um, features in their devices, and one of them is something called Live Listen. So you could use with like your AirPod Pro and your iPhone, where the iPhone acts as a microphone. So you could actually put it in a, um, you know, a group conversation or you could have someone talk into it. It's like a, you know, like a little spy trick if you want to put your phone somewhere and listen in on a conversation. But it's not something practical where I would just, you know, whip whip out my phone and be like, yeah, uh, yeah one second, you know, can you just talk to my phone so I can hear you? Some of the cool things with the AirPods Pro is that it has noise canceling. So those problems where I'm like in those situations where it's really loud, and I don't really have to engage in a conversation, but I, you know, I'm with a bunch of people and we're walking through a very loud area or a large gathering or a really noisy restaurant. I can have my AirPod in one ear and um, activate the noise canceling. And the noise canceling basically uh, 
just kind of like resets my brain, just tunes out everything. It works better than having like an earplug or something because it's it's actively noise canceling. So it's actively just, just shutting down everything so I can just like focus in on what's happening. It's made being in loud situations not anxiety inducing. Even, you know, if this AirPod runs out of juice, I could take the left one and put it in my ear and I just have to flip it upside down. But basically I have a two for one. My real hope is that the Apple engineers could activate something that's very similar to the Phonak Cross BR, where the, because there are microphones on the AirPods, if they could somehow send a signal from, you know, the left ear and the left microphone and send it into the right ear using transparency mode, but with like features where you could control the volume, I think that would be a game changer for accessibility. And the fact that it only retails for $250 makes that really attractive as a sort of an over-the-counter solution. So I think Apple's engineers definitely have, you know, definitely can do that. It's just a matter of if there's a large enough market for it, which I think there is. But you know, the chips are getting smaller. The technology is already here. It's getting more affordable. I don't know why these cross hearing aids are still thousands and thousands of dollars. Like it doesn't make any sense. I'm gonna review it at some point. I'm gonna try to get my hands on one, but you know, it's for people without the means, it, it's really just a really, you know, no solution. Like it just doesn't make any sense. So SSD is nothing to be ashamed about. I'd love to hear uh, any of your comments, if you've experienced any of this, please hit that like button, please hit that subscribe button if this video was helpful to you. If you have any questions or comments, hit me on the blog at runplayback.com. Peace.